Hey, Yanchan. <laughs> We're trying to rehearse for a play, but the lead actress isn't here. Would you mind filling in for her? <laughs> Come on, it'll be fun. It's a play about a serial killer. <laughs> Okay, I'll help. Yay! Come with me, Yanchan. The killer picked up the knife that was on the table. Then she went on a killing spree, murdering everyone around her. With each kill, she lost more and more of her sanity, and her attacks became more brutal and savage. When the deed was done, she burst into maniacal laughter. <laughs> she had calmed down, she was able to proceed to the next phase of her plan. The killer quickly began to destroy the evidence of her crime. She picked up one of the corpses. She carried the corpse to a nearby incinerator, and she dumped the corpse inside. Once all five corpses were in the incinerator, she activated it. Corpse is incinerated. She prepared to clean up the rest of the evidence. The killer started to clean up all of the blood that she had spilled. First, she grabbed a bucket. She brought it to a sink and filled it with water. Then, she added bleach to the water and dipped a mop into the bucket. After that, she mopped up every last drop of blood on the ground. With all of the blood mopped up, she moved on to the next part of the cleanup process. The killer quickly ran to the shower building to clean herself up. She opened up her locker She removed her blood-splattered outfit and changed into a towel. Then, she took a shower and washed the blood from her body. When she was clean, she returned to the locker and changed into clean clothing. Perfectly clean. Now, nobody would suspect that she just committed murder a few minutes ago. The killer carried the murder weapon to a drinking fountain and used water to wash the blood away. Then, she picked up the clothes that she had worn during her killing spree. She brought the blood-stained clothing to a washing machine, tossed it inside, and activated it, wiping away the last piece of evidence that connected her to the crime. I just thought of something. Instead of cleaning the evidence, she could have just dumped it into the incinerator along with the corpses, you know? Well, I guess it works either way. 
killer needed to steal a key, but a witness was nearby, so she hid behind a nearby wall. Once she was hidden from view, she performed a creepy giggle. The witness, confused and unsettled by this unexpected sound, began to investigate the noise. While the witness was distracted, the killer quickly grabbed the unguarded key. With the key in hand, the killer was able to proceed to the next phase of her master plan. The killer wanted to dispose of a corpse, but witnesses were nearby, so she put on a raincoat, put a tarp underneath the corpse of her latest victim grabbed a circular saw and chopped her victim's corpse into pieces. She removed the raincoat, dumped the dismembered body parts into the incinerator, and activated it. of a corpse in front of a group of witnesses without raising any suspicion. Excellent. The killer made a mistake. She allowed a witness to see her while she was covered in blood. The killer's reputation was at stake. She spoke to the witness and quickly made up an excuse. witness fell for it. Next, the killer casually socialized with the witness to maintain her act. The witness was a member of the drama club, so the killer made a positive comment about drama. The killer was now on good terms with the witness. Her reputation was safe, for now. The killer researched her victims thoroughly before killing them. She took out her smartphone, snapped a photo of her victim's face, saved it for future use, and hid behind a wall before her victim could take notice of her. By studying her victim's routine, she could visualize her victim's whereabouts at any point in time. She could even visualize the presence of nearby objects that would be useful for committing murder. The killer grabbed a syringe and a tranquilizer. She hid the syringe in her clothing. She spoke to her next victim and convinced the unsuspecting girl to follow her into a secluded room. She closed the door behind her, took out the syringe, and stabbed the girl from behind. She dragged the girl's unconscious body to a large case and dumped her inside of it.
She left the area and returned after midnight to collect the body of her victim with no witnesses. The killer decided to drown her next victim. First, she grabbed some rat poison. Next, she used a giggle to lure her victim away from her food. <laughs> then, while her victim was distracted, she put the rat poison into her meal. The killer waited until the victim was puking into a toilet, snuck up behind her, and drowned her. Hey, what are you? <laughs> if she could manage to find some lethal poison, I guess she could put that in the food instead. The killer planned to murder her next victim with electricity. The first step was grabbing a bucket. She filled the bucket up with water and dumped the water on the ground at her victim's feet. Then she picked up a car battery and threw it into the puddle of water. Even as she stood over the corpse of her latest victim, she was already planning her next murder. <laughs> as the killer continued to take lives, she encountered different types of victims. Most of her victims were easy to take down. But some of them fought back. Some victims would fight tooth and nail against the killer, attempting to disarm and apprehend her. However, she always stood victorious in the end. She prepared to build a tripwire trap. She grabbed a knife, a spool of thread, and masking tape. Her next victim would die by fire. She grabbed a canister of gasoline and poured it into a bucket. She poured the gasoline into a water cooler and set up the trap. After her unsuspecting victim was covered in gasoline, she used a candle to light her on fire. this? It smells like... gasoline? Uh, wait, no, no! Uh, 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 uh! She had killed with blades, water, electricity, and even fire itself. She controlled the elements. Today, she would eliminate her target and dispose of all evidence without being spotted even once.
accomplished. There was nothing she could not do. She had become a true master of death. Thanks for your help, Yanchan. Play about a serial killer. <laughs> Sorry, I can't. I'm busy today. Oh, I, I understand. <laughs> uh, bye then. Oh, wait, Yanchan, that's not right. But don't worry, it's okay. We'll just start over and try again. Oh, you're leaving already? Um, okay, see you around. Every night, for as long as I can remember, I have been having the same dream. In this dream, I meet a boy, fall in love with him, start a family, and live happily ever after. I've always believed that this dream was showing me my future, showing me the person I'll be with for the rest of my life. I spent years fantasizing about what it would be like to finally meet him. And then, one year ago, I found him. The boy from my dreams is in the same school as me, but I'm too afraid to speak to him because I'm worried that I'll ruin everything and make him hate me. So, for the past year, I've been admiring him from afar, while I built up enough courage to speak to him. He's my soulmate. My destiny. But, while we're at school, he's just my senpai. I was having so much fun watching him, learning everything about him, and planning our life together. But then, someone had to come and ruin everything. She's trying to take him from me, and I won't let her get away with it. After I disposed of the girl who was trying to steal my senpai, I cleaned up all the evidence. I left no trace of what I had done. Or so I thought. When the police investigated the girl's disappearance, they found a single bloodstain that I failed to clean up. This was enough to make the police begin investigating the girl's disappearance as a possible murder case. A potential murder at an elite school was big news. It was a stain on the school's prestigious reputation. The headmaster didn't take it very well. I heard that he struck a deal with the police 
to keep any future investigations as discreet as possible. The faculty and the student council will be on high alert from now on. I'll need to be more careful in the future. But I can't rest yet. Another threat has appeared. She plans to confess her feelings to my senpai at 6 p.m. on Friday. I need to stop her before then. If I kill every girl who shows an interest in my senpai, I might attract more police attention to the school. So, even though I'm tempted to plunge a knife into her heart, perhaps I should consider avoiding bloodshed. I should eavesdrop on their conversations. I might be able to learn some valuable information. In fact, with a little bit of sabotage, I might be able to ruin their budding relationship and make my senpai lose all interest in her. After eliminating that girl, I thought my senpai would be safe. But now, I have a new problem to deal with. Another girl is showing interest in him. A cute tomboy with a gung-ho attitude. Boys like that sort of girl, don't they? If he keeps spending time around her, she might steal his heart. I can't let that happen. Now that I'm thinking about it, I heard a nasty rumor about her. Apparently, she has a... secret hobby. Something dangerous. Something she could get in big trouble for. It might be worth it to follow her around school and learn what she's hiding. Perhaps I can find a way to make her bad habits backfire on her. You know what they say. You play with fire, and you get burned. My sweet, wonderful senpai is too popular for his own good. Yet another girl has been getting a little too close to him lately. She's a shy, timid little bookworm. When a guy sees that type of girl, he just wants to scoop her up in his arms and protect her, right? It makes me sick. I need to get rid of her as soon as possible. But if her death is an obvious murder, it might complicate things. If I do decide to kill her, perhaps I should make it look like an accident. The only thing I know about this girl is that she loves books. It sure would be a shame if the one thing she loves the most is what leads to her tragic, untimely demise. Before she can crush my dreams, I need to crush her. My senpai is perfect in every way. He's smart, talented, handsome. So I suppose I shouldn't be surprised that another girl has fallen for him. This one is an aspiring athlete. Fit, tan, tome dabs. Boys go crazy for that type of girl, don't they? She worries me. I'll need to take her out quickly. She seems to be encouraging my senpai to adopt her lifestyle choices. Eat healthy, exercise often, no smoking or drinking. Of course, all of these are respectable decisions. But she's actually putting her health in grave danger by getting between me and the man I love. I heard that she prepares a special meal in the home ec room every day. A healthy, nutritious meal packed full of vitamins and minerals. I hope she chokes on it. Like an insect buzzing around a meal that was left unattended, another pest has begun to orbit around my senpai. The latest girl comes from one of Japan's wealthiest families. She looks down on anyone with less money than her, which of course means that she looks down on nearly everyone. I can tell that she doesn't see my senpai as an equal. It would be more accurate to say that she wants to keep him as a pet. I'd like to say that my senpai has enough sense to avoid getting involved with her. 
but the promise of a cozy life in the lap of luxury might be too tempting for him. Just to make sure that he doesn't make the wrong decision, I'll have to remove the option from his life altogether. It looks like the only reason she enrolled in Akademi was for the prestige. She has no intention of studying at all. She spends all day sunbathing at the pool. You know, every year, a lot of unfortunate accidents happen around pools. It would be such a shame if she fell asleep and drowned. I can't take my eyes off my senpai for even one moment. Because there's always a new girl trying to steal him from me. This week, my rival is a girl who dreams of becoming a pop idol. She spent so many years of her life learning how to sing and dance. What a shame that all her efforts will go to waste. Bubbly, full of energy, always smiling. Guys can't resist that type of girl, can they? I definitely can't ignore this one. I need to deal with her, and quickly. She set up a stage in the school gym, where she rehearses her cute little songs. Microphones, speakers, all those wires and cables. There's gotta be an opportunity in there somewhere. She wants to captivate an audience, does she? Well, I should lend her a hand and help her give a shocking performance. Many girls have competed for my senpai's heart. Most of them were mere pests rather than actual threats. But the latest one is different. Akademi's top student. The brightest girl in school. Perfect scores on every test. Flawless grades in every subject. The perfect combination of beauty and brains. Any guy at school would be honored to have her attention. If she continues to spend time around my senpai, there is no doubt that she'll steal him away from me. It feels like I've been seeing the police patrolling near Akademi more often lately. The unsolved murder from earlier this year is still a stain on their reputation. Any bloodshed at this point in time could attract unwanted attention. Perhaps I should keep my hands clean from now on. Hmm... Akademi's top student. It sure would be a shame if she was expelled from school, wouldn't it? Yamato Nadishiko. It's a phrase that refers to the traditional Japanese concept of the ideal woman. A woman who is pure and feminine, gentle, graceful, humble, patient, faithful, meek, quiet, timid, Keep the house clean, bear lots of children, respect your husband no matter what, know your place. Yamato Nadishiko. It's often said that this type of woman is going extinct, that it's rare to find a woman who embodies those traits in this day and age. But there's one girl at Akademi who fits that description perfectly. The most popular girl in school. Every boy wants her. Every girl wants to be her. Even my senpai has fallen under her spell. Well, it's time to break the spell that this witch has cast over the school. I'd like to stain her perfect reputation and turn her adoring fans into her enemies. Sometimes, when I'm following my senpai home from school... I notice that he likes to buy certain magazines from convenience stores. Magazines featuring gravure idols, attractive young women who strike provocative poses in revealing outfits. He's a big fan of one girl in particular. Since her debut, he's bought every magazine with even a single photo of her. And... She just transferred into Akademi. Most of the school's male population are already completely infatuated with her. They follow her around school like a pack of pathetic, lovesick puppy dogs. And my senpai is among them. 
As much as I'd love to carve a hole in her heart, it might be difficult with so many witnesses surrounding her at all times. Perhaps the best way to deal with her is to set her up with another boy. After all, it's not like it's going to be difficult to find a volunteer. I've been trying to avoid acknowledging him, but at this point in time, that's just not possible anymore. The man in the trench coat, the investigative journalist, he finally made his move. For months now, he's been obsessed with investigating Akademi, but the headmaster has always refused him entry into the school. Up until now, that was enough to stop him. But recently, he found a loophole. Apparently, he's had an apprentice for a while now. She's a junior detective. And a former student of Akademi. Back when she was attending school here, she did something extraordinary. She solved a high-profile murder mystery that the police were struggling with. That accomplishment turned her into a national celebrity almost overnight. There was nothing more for her to gain from remaining enrolled in Akademi, so she left without graduating and quickly began a career as a junior detective. And now, one year later, she's back. She claims that she's here to finish her degree, but I can tell that there's more to the story than that. Her mentor, that journalist, is firmly determined to investigate Akademi. Clearly, he must have asked his apprentice to return here to be his eyes and ears. The two of them have been interviewing students, and they've learned something. Things tend to happen to girls who have a crush on a certain boy at school. My senpai. He's become a person of interest to them. And now, that junior detective girl is investigating him. Following him everywhere, talking to him all the time. And lately, she's been getting a bit too friendly with him. It's enough to make my blood boil. But, as much as I would love to sink a knife into her heart, a violent approach might be a bad decision this time around. She's convinced a bunch of students to patrol the hallways with cameras. Right now, the slightest mistake could cost me everything. This girl. She's probably the most dangerous enemy I've faced so far. But, if I could somehow manage to befriend her, and put her in debt to me, she could be a powerful ally. The past 11 weeks have challenged me in every way possible, but despite everything, I've still managed to defeat every one of my adversaries. These experiences have made me stronger, braver. I think I finally found the courage to talk to him, to tell him how I feel. When I confess my feelings to him, it has to be special. It has to be perfect. I don't believe in the myth about the cherry tree behind the school, but I can't think of any place more appropriate for my confession. Today. I'm going to tell him today. Senpai, please accept my feelings. A murderous schoolgirl who kills in the name of love. It was a novel concept. Newspapers realized it would get sales. TV stations realized it would boost ratings. It didn't take long for the news of my murder trial to spread across the entire nation. I've never seen an event get that much coverage before. It was a real media circus. And now... Everyone in the country knows my name and face. Even worse, they all know how I feel about my senpai. Oh, this is my worst nightmare. I didn't want him to learn about me like this. I wanted our first meeting to be special. Perfect. 
exactly like in my dreams. But now, that can never happen. He'll never be able to see me as a cute underclassman who has a crush on him. He'll only be able to see me as that girl who was accused of murder on national TV. If I confess my love to him now, I doubt he'll want anything to do with me. Even though I was declared innocent, there will always be doubts in his mind. That stupid journalist ruined absolutely everything. There's nothing I want more than to rip his heart out and shove it down his throat. But spilling any blood right now would only attract more attention. There are too many eyes on me right now. I have to lay low for a while. Revenge isn't an option at this point in time. But I'll never forget what that man did. I won't be able to have a romantic confession underneath a cherry tree. But this isn't over yet. I still have one option remaining. My last resort. Sana. <sighs> um, excuse me. I couldn't help but notice that you seem quite sad about something. Would you like to talk about it? When I see a sad face, I can't help but try to make things better. So, what's wrong? We could do this. I miss her so much. I don't understand how we could possibly go back to my normal life after something like this has happened. If I just leave you here, I'll worry about you. <laughs> well, I guess it'd be better than moping around. Okay. Sure. I'll come with you. Don't talk to me. I know you killed someone. I'll make sure everyone knows what you've done.
I'll get the band together right away. Ryoba, come on! You gotta get it together! For as long as I can remember, I've always felt... empty. Incomplete. Like a part of me is... missing. This hollow feeling has dominated my life. I've never been able to feel anything else. My world has always been cold, dark, silent. My mother was exactly like me when she was a child. But when she met my father, everything changed for her. He brought warmth and color and life into her world. He made her...